Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be playing around with some inks in honor of Inktober, but first I wanted to say a quick thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. By now I'm sure most of you already know about Skillshare, but just in case you're new to the art community and or this channel, let me go ahead and tell you a little bit about them. Skillshare is an online learning community with more than 25,000 classes in art, design, business, and more. You can join more than 7 million other creators to foster your creativity, curiosity, or even your career. A premium membership is less than $10 a month when billed annually or $15 billed month to month and gives you unlimited access to all of the classes on the platform. If you're new to the platform and would like to try Skillshare for free, check out the link in the description below to get a two month free trial. For this video, I went looking to Skillshare for some classes to refresh my familiarity with brush pens and followed along with Marie Noel Worm's class called Improve Your Inkwork Brush Pen Adventures with Lines and Textures. There are tons of classes over on Skillshare regarding inkwork, so if you haven't already and want to squeeze a few in before Inktober ends, be sure to head on over and check them out. Now this video here on YouTube isn't officially part of my Let's Learn series because I wasn't able to explore the medium as in depth as I would have liked to without other forms of inks and applications such as India ink, colored inks, or dip and fountain pens. But I do hope that you enjoy this exploration just the same as we are all wrapping up Inktober. During this video, I'm going to be using three different brush pens, the Tombow Fudnosuke that I used to use for bullet journaling, the Zig Cartoonist number 24 brush, and the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. Following along with Marie's class, I explored mark making with each of these brushes before getting started for my own sake, but this video isn't a review of these products. If you want a comprehensive comparison or reviews about various brush pens, I highly recommend checking out one of the many other videos here on YouTube that focus on Inktober supplies. And more specifically, I'd like to give a little shout out to my friend Kat over at Meow Meow Kapow. She has an extensive two-part ultimate brush pen showdown as well as a lot of other ink focused videos in general. If you want to see me bumbling around with supplies I have no idea how to use, stay tuned. After getting familiar with my tools, I wanted to practice with some little sketches. And for this Inktober, I've been completely enamored with art from another friend of mine, Mary Sanch. I have always loved Mary's style, but she has taken things to a whole nother level with her daily prompts this year by completing all of her drawings completely free handed. And they are bloody gorgeous. So I thought to myself, you're already working in a medium that you're not comfortable with, and you're also not very strong at sketching without extensive use of guides and time. So why not try this method, which requires you to be way more skilled in this arena than you actually are? That'll go great. Look y'all, Mary and others that I have seen that can knock this style of art out of the park make it look easy, but it so is not, as this little duck proved to me 10 times over. I was tempted to drop page after page of them trying to nail it, but after three or so of them, I knew I had a lot more of this video left to go, so I skipped that part. And therein lies the trouble with making content for a living because I often don't have enough time to explore my own personal growth and reflect upon it before moving on to the next thing. So just a little note there about how important those steps actually are. I want to take a few moments to talk about why I find this style so difficult compared to my usual technique so that you have some educational takeaway from this video. In watercolor, I usually work from light to dark with some exceptions in using a few dark values to really anchor my piece and let me know what the range needs to be. In past Inktobers, I've used ink in the same way that I use watercolors, but this time around, I wanted to explore this different approach of using deep, bold lines first and adding in value later. In one of Mary's videos, she shows that she works from the darker values first and then adds just a single or maybe two washes to add the necessary contrast and form. This type of inking style requires your marks to be very confident rather than more passively building up value and texture with each layer as I generally tend to do. By being forced to put in those dark marks that carry the entire piece first, there is no out, and what you put down on the paper is staying there, so that kind of confidence takes time to build through practice. So I guess what I want to try to say to all of you is that if you have had trouble like I have with this style, that 
you're not alone in the slightest. I do hope to be able to revisit my own version of a belated Inktober once this month calms down, but it wasn't going to happen over the course of a single video. Next up, I started with what I had hoped would be my main project, but as you will see, that didn't exactly pan out due to the lack of confidence that I just mentioned. This is supposed to be a gray crowned crane, which you have seen me paint in color here before on the channel in a former AAC piece. Things start off well enough, but as I found out the hard way, my ink pieces have an even gnarlier ugly phase than my watercolor paintings tend to have. I ended up making a lot of mistakes and adding much more ink than I intended in certain places, and I was so discouraged by the way that it was looking that I just turned off the camera entirely. Luckily or unluckily, my own stubbornness drove me to keep fiddling with this piece that I thought was a lost cause, though it turns out that things weren't as dire as they seemed. Just as I have mentioned before on my channel many times before, see your work through and just try to finish it. The worst thing that can happen is that it's still not what you wanted, and best case scenario is that it surprises you. Now, I'm not saying that this is the best thing that I've ever done or anything to that effect, but I also know that it doesn't look like a complete pile of garbage. I wish that I had filmed the more interesting bits to show you because it was in those moments of struggle and problem solving of trying to turn this piece around that I was able to accomplish just that. So on to the third piece, a little more in theme with October and Halloween, though if you ask me, there's nothing spooky about crows or ravens, they're just amazingly cool creatures. But in full disclosure, this was not my first crow of the session. There was one before that I totally botched, and given the sheer number of sketches that I tried to do for this video, I couldn't squeeze them all in, but hopefully you guys get the idea. I started off mapping the outlines of the darkest values, including placing some of the more prominent feathers. Whereas this would not be my approach in a watercolor painting, when working with the inks and a limited number of values, I wanted the birds to read as having feathers rather than having a flat panel of black or gray. However, every time I messed up a line due to a shaky, untrained hand, certain areas would get thicker or covered up entirely, which you will see later in the case with this poor bird's lower beak, which was eventually colored just completely black. I gave up on trying to balance out those lines, but that definitely wasn't part of the original plan. As I continue to try and blend out the black feather shapes and add washes to bring everything together, which is a very Denise thing to do, I somehow ended up turning the piece into something that's not easily recognizable as my work at all. That isn't so much of a judgment as an observation in just that when I was trying to take on this other type of style, it didn't look like hers, it didn't look like mine, it just was some weird in-between. Inktober is something that I've always wanted to participate in, but October has forever been an insanely busy month for me, so the stars never seem to align. However, if I take away anything from the process of making this video, it's that I need to seriously carve out some time to be able to work with this medium if I want to get more comfortable with it. I love and admire Mary's work, but a style like that doesn't come naturally to me, and clearly I didn't successfully pull it off here. While I don't dislike the end result of this painting, it's not what I was aiming for, and it's something that I would have to actively need to work towards to even try and approach levels of confidence in. I'm much more inclined to use ink like I have in the past, and that is to say to use them like watercolor in all their flowy glory with a paintbrush. Something else I learned about my own preferences throughout the course of this process is that as much as I love other artists' ink work, and as much as I love mixing and painting with my own grays, I'm not really digging the flatter, uniform color that ink brings to the table when paired with my own work. I like seeing bits of cerulean and Indian red mingle together on the paper that upon closer look breathe more color and life and energy into a painting. After all, this channel is called In Liquid Color, so perhaps I will leave the ink to those who know how to harness it in all of its own unique glory. Anywho, that will bring us to the end of our video, and thank you all for watching. Be sure to leave me a comment and let me know how you feel about inks in general and how you've been enjoying Inktober this year. Thank you to all of my wonderful patrons and to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and I will see you next time. Until then, happy painting. Thank you.